El Salvador is in a state of emergency because of a rise in homicides. Lawmakers approved the measure this morning by majority vote. Now this law allows for security forces to intercept phone calls and hold criminal suspects in detention for longer periods of time. El Salvador has long a long history of organized crime groups. The nation has led the world with the highest number of homicides relative to its population for several years in a row. The Biden administration is expected to reveal a new minimum tax for billionaires. The White House says it's part of President Joe Biden's budget plan for 2023. The tax would require households with more than a hundred million dollars to pay a rate of 20% on their full income. Supporters say to make sure wealthy Americans can't pay a tax rate lower than teachers or even firefighters. The revenue would help fund green energy programs and lower the cost of prescription medicine. Another day of deceiving <laughs> weather. We had sunshine right here by the station, but let me tell you, it was chilly out there. Storm Track 3 meteorologist Katie Melvin is with me now. So Katie, how's it looking out there tonight? I'm guessing still <laughs> pretty chilly. Well, no more sunshine and very chilly. Mm -hmm. Very, very cold outside. Some of us have already started to dip down close to freezing <sighs> and it's just, yeah, it's hard to believe that it is the end of March and we are dealing with these really chilly temperatures. So Poplar Bluff still on one of the warmer sides right now. 41 still really holding on to those 40s, but yeah, it's going to be a really chilly night ahead. Unfortunately, taking a look across the area. Some of us are still holding on to those 40s and I don't blame you one bit because 30 degrees does not sound fun at all after the nice weather we've had leading up to this. But it does look like some of us are trying to hold on to the 40s, but it looks like tonight we aren't going to um, it is going to get pretty chilly. So tonight, mostly cloudy conditions. It was passing clouds today, but those clouds will continue to build into tonight. And those bitter cold temperatures are going to last through the morning and through part of tomorrow as well. So tomorrow a little bit warmer, but we're still below average. We're not exactly where we should be. And then midweek, we're really keeping an eye on because we have a chance of some heavy showers and possibly some isolated storms. Radar and satellite right now not showing a whole lot. You can see a little bit of the clouds that we saw. They're very high elevated clouds. Nothing super serious, not uh, very filling, but it is across the entire area. And as you can see, some of us are dipping down to the 40s. Mount Vernon's at 34. This is overnight tonight. This is 2 a.m. down to 31. That is below freezing. Paducah at 41 as well as Murray. So some of us trying to hold on to those 40s. But alas, this is tomorrow morning. We're all in the 30s. So on your way to work tomorrow, or possibly school, you definitely want to grab that extra layer because it's just going to be very chilly. We don't see a really big warm up either going into tomorrow. Some of us do reach the 50s, but normally for this time of year, our high should be somewhere around 63. So definitely a chilly day ahead. But luckily, I am tracking a bit of a warm up once we get through this weekend and Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday look to be much warmer Tuesday, fairly dry as well, but Wednesday, not so much. So although it is warmer, it is bringing with it a lot of rain. Wednesday looks to be like a bit of a washout. So watching this play through, here is all the cloud cover we've been dealing with um, and we are going to deal with on Tuesday. We've got this low that's off to our west right now. This low is actually in the Pacific Ocean. It's still feel, um, currently forming, but as it finally does, it will move towards the east coast over us. And you can see this cold front extending off of it. That's going to be giving a lot of lift and causing a lot of precipitation issues. So as you let this play out, we can see the strength part. The strongest part of this storm is going to be Wednesday at 4 p.m. So bad timing for sure. A lot of people are going to be headed home. So just make sure you're weather aware on Wednesday. The Storm Prediction Center went ahead and gave us a severe storm threat. There is a good chance we could see maybe some storms out of this. Still keep an eye on it. It is a couple days away, but just in case, download that Storm Track 3 app in case we have any watches or warnings that do go out. So it does tomorrow look to be a little bit warmer. We do see that 30 degree for tonight. Tuesday, a lot warmer, 68 degrees above average. And then Wednesday, that chance of rain returns and possibly some storms. So definitely going to be weather aware. And then unfortunately, we are tracking a cool down after those two days. We're back down into the 30s for our lows and 50s for our highs. Well, I was hoping for a little bit warmer of spring weather, but I mean, you have to expect those rain showers. Yeah, it's only up from there after the rain and the cold temperatures. Hopefully some dry and warm temperatures. Right, I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. Thanks, Katie. Thanks. Well, let me tell you, windy weather is not helping firefighters in Texas. The Medina County fire continues to grow in intensity. The blaze initially began Friday, 
and is believed to have stemmed from a vehicle fire. Governor Greg Abbott has issued a disaster declaration with more than a thousand acres burned. While some in the San Antonio metro area have been able to return to their homes, officials warn that could change. Authorities estimate the fire is only 20% contained. And in Oregon, four people were killed after a driver crashes into an encampment of homeless people. Authorities in Salem say the crash happened early this morning. Two people died at the scene. Two others were taken to the hospital where they later passed away. The driver of the vehicle was also taken by ambulance to a hospital. No word yet on the extent of the driver's injuries or if any charges have been filed. And still had the Fellowship of Christian Athletes hold their yearly Night of Champions banquet tonight. Gabby joins us with more in sports. You can't hear me yet because I'm not, I haven't worked. Yeah, I can hear you. With baseball and softball season in full swing, we can't forget about banquet season. For the first time since 2019, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes of Southern Illinois held its annual Night of Champions banquet tonight at the Doubletree Hotel in Mount Vernon. The night started with a silent auction where FCA donors, sponsors, and backers were able to bid on several cool sports memorabilia options. Nearly 400 people, people were all under one roof tonight learning about FCA and its mission. The banquet's keynote speaker, Tommy Bowden. Bowden is the son of legendary Florida State football coach Bobby Bowden, who passed away last August. 
Tommy also was the former head coach for Tulane and Clemson and first got involved in the FCA in 1996. We spoke with Bowden and FCA State Director Bob Pankey and both say they were excited to continue to spread FCA across Southern Illinois. The last time we had this event was in 2019. Literally we were two days before the event in 2020 and we had to cancel it because of COVID and so um, it's been a long time uh, coming and just really, really excited to be able to have the opportunity again. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes is something that is kind of my family has been associated with uh, for a long time and and uh, anything to promote the organization, it does such a, to me, a great benefit for young people at a very critical stage, junior high, high school, college where I was. So uh, trying to give support uh, for a great organization. In short, tonight was FCA's Super Bowl. It was their single biggest fundraiser of the year, and event organizers say it was very successful.